Hello creative friends and welcome to my studio. So this is the third part of the series on simple and elegant floral paintings with watercolor. And last week we did the lilacs and the first week we did this. <laughs> I still don't have a name for these flowers, but this week we're gonna make tulips. So for this one, um, I had a bit of a story and I'm doing real-time commentary as opposed to what I did for the last two because I want to explain I want to explain about the brush stroke. So I'm gonna start first by grabbing a bit of transparent pyrrole orange by Daniel Smith. Let me just grab this. And I'm going to add quite a bit of water. I want a fairly diluted color. And I'm also going to grab a tiny bit of shell pink and mix that in. So that's going to give me that orangey peachy color. I'm going to swatch that. When I started doing some thumbnails and sketches for this tulip, I realized that I was falling into the trap of being too detail focused. And the purpose of this process is to remain simple. And then Eventually, I came to the realization that in the past, I have done tulips without even knowing it. And it kind of goes like this. I've done several paintings with doodles on them in which I did a simple brush stroke. And I used to call this a flower, <laughs> my flower. It was a nondescript flower. But then when I started thinking about how can I simplify the process, or the making of a tulip, you know, making it really simple. Um, I couldn't get it to work. It didn't look the way I wanted it to. It was too rigid, um, too clean for my taste. And I wanted this to be in the same, I wanted the tulips to have the same feel as the other two paintings, a little bit loose. And um, then I remembered how I used to do these flowers in the past and I thought yeah these are tulips they could be called tulips so this is what we're going to do and the making of a tulip is fairly simple or my interpretation of the tulip is fairly simple let me just add a little bit more water maybe a tiny bit more pink I have a number six round brush. This Oh no, that's a number eight, my bad. So it's a number eight uh, round brush by Caviar Dynasty. And I'm sort of using, let me see if I can, here, I'll use the other side. I'm using it so that my brush is almost perpendicular to the page. So I'm not doing it point down. I'm sort of using it this way. I'm hoping the side camera will pick that up, but this is how I do it. So it's just like, you know, a, a side swipe on both sides. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I have also been struggling with the composition of this because of the shape of the leaves on a tulip, which I'm not crazy about. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. I don't agree with nature on tulips. <laughs> I love tulips, but I don't like their leaves. And so I'm just going to wing it and whatever happens, happens. And we're going to we're going to play with that. So I'm going to have my main flower here, which is going to be the biggest one, kind of like right about here. So, right, two swipes, whoop, whoop. I have a big puddle, but I'm gonna try and pick it up a little bit by making my brush a tiny bit thirsty. All right, and then I'm going to install another one here, same principle. Now this one is going to be drooping a little bit just because of the direction of the, the bottom of the flower. So maybe this flower is on its way out. It's lived its life. And then I'm going to have, oh, I had a drop of water on my paper. <laughs> it's all good. Um, and then I want kind of like a little butt. So we're just gonna do a tiny one like so. 
right? So I have sort of like my visual triangle that way. And I'm gonna grab a number two round, I believe. This is silver by Black Velvet. I'm gonna grab green gold and do the thick stock of a tulip. And this is where my love affair with tulip is, is divided uh, because I, I love the shape of the flower, but the stock, the stock of a tulip is so thick. And I like thin stems. <laughs> so, I mean, I will interpret the stems as I want to, but I have to make it a tiny bit dark, um, thicker than my usual. So, all right, so there's one. I have a tiny bit of water. Now this one is drooping and it's okay if the green walks into the flower. I think it adds uh, a charm to the whole, to the flower. Fits the mood of the other flowers too. Oh, I'm liking that. I love that color with green gold. And then we have this little bud, which somehow grew taller than the other ones, <laughs> uh, which obviously does not make sense, but it, it doesn't have to make sense, right? And I'm gonna make that one straight up and down as well, because it's growing. I love how the green has gone into that orangey peachy color. I'm not surprised because green gold is a color that propagates very, very fast. So I'm going to grab a tiny bit of Van Dyke green and mix it in with the green gold. Give me the color that I want and we're going to have now the leaves are quite thick and straight up and close to the stalk or the, um, the stem of the flower. So there's our first one. This one, because the flower is drooping a bit, I'm gonna give it a little curl like so. might have to darken this side here. We'll figure it out after. Now, our baby one. Hmm. I'm gonna have to enlarge the stem at the bottom here so that I can have a leaf like so. Just a tiny leaf, just to give the illusion. This is this is a painting, it's not real life. Now, uh, we have gold on the other paintings, so of course we have to have gold on this one as well, and I think I'm going to add it to the baby to give it more um, to give it some incentive. <laughs> For the baby to grow. <laughs> there we go. I think I'm going to add another leaf to this one. Just to give that flower more importance. And I'm going to darken that one. Because we can see the stalk or the stand through the leaf. There we go. Our next step is to dry this before we add the color pencil. So I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool. This is a Polychromos color pencil. The color is Indian red, and I'm going to use it 
to create the outline of this. So we've got our bud. The bud is going to have just the outline of two petals, like so. This one, we're going to give it two petals as well. Maybe the illusion of a third one in the back here. This one's going to have a three one. So um, let me see. How about that guy like this and then like so. You can also add a little bit of shading if you desire. Um, I like to sometimes shape at the base of where the flower meets the stem. That's not necessary, but it's it's the fun part for me. So <laughs> um, it's always difficult not to do any. Uh, I kind of went heavy on this little guy, but. That's okay. So there we have our three paintings. I love the way they look together. I would probably do the tulips a tiny bit bigger if I were to display the three of these on a wall, but I think they would look great as f small paintings, little framed paintings, or um, greeting cards or even especially Mother's Day cards since it's coming up real soon. But I hope you've enjoyed the series. I will list all the supplies in the description of the video as well as in a pinned comment as usual. So I would um, suggest that you look for the information there first and if you can't find what you're looking for don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you're going to have a beautiful week ahead. Stay safe, healthy, and creative. And I will see, see you soon. Okay, I'm just realizing how this could benefit from other leaves on the ground. So I'm gonna do it. This is dangerous. <laughs> mm. Right, I may have gone too far with the, <laughs> with the leaves. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we need to stop this. So these are tulips that have not grown yet. Okay, we're done. We're done. But I like it better. I like it better. It's more, you know, it's, it's more. It's better. All right, bye.